So continuing on from the last video using D&D Beyond Maps, I want to show you what virtual tabletop platform I use online. So I know there's a lot of digital tool sets out there. You have things like Fantasy Grounds, Roll20, but Owlbear Rodeo is a free tool online that you can just simply import maps to and get playing. So if you're like me and use D&D Beyond rather than something like Roll20 or Fantasy Grounds to buy your D&D content for online play, uh, you obviously don't have a virtual tabletop native to the D&D Beyond content that you buy, so you may be looking for something to use. And that's where I use Owlbear Rodeo. Free, it's simple to use, and all it is is a website that allows you to import a map and use tokens and move them around. So let's jump into Owlbear Rodeo, that's owlbear.rodeo, and you start off on this home screen. As a dungeon master, all you're going to want to do is hit start game. As a player, you're going to want to join a game. So for my group, I run a Dungeons & Dragons after school game for kids, which by the way, if you know a kid that wants to play Dungeons & Dragons, they can join the Adventure Guild for April at beholdgamers.com. So if you want to support this channel and also help kids uh, learn and uh, interact through Dungeons and Dragons, be sure to send them to beholdgamers.com, sign them up, and uh, April will be a fun month. It's going to be a pirate themed adventure. All right, so back to the home screen here. I'm just going to hit this start button and we can get set up. Uh, so Owlbear Rodeo just starts you off on this screen right here. It's totally blank. Uh, just a quick walkthrough of what's here on the right hand side you can see we've got tokens. They have some tokens included, but you can also add your own tokens. I'll show you how to do that at a later point. Next to that, you have the digital tools here uh, that allows you to import maps, move tokens around, uh, fog of war, it lets you draw on your map. So if you have something like an area effect or a wall or something like that, uh, that was cast on the ground, you can show that. Uh, difficult terrain as well. You can mark where difficult terrain might be and you can even add notes to your map. They also have a digital dice tray on the top left. You click that and it shows you the dice tray. So if you're not using something like the native dice on D&D Beyond and you want to do something virtually, they have that for you right here as well. All right, so let's import our first map. So all you have to do is come up to the top right and there is this little button with the mountains here. It's the select map button. So I'm going to click on that and you can see I've already got two maps loaded. Uh, basically, Owlbear Rodeo stores your maps in the cache on your browser. Uh, so any tokens, any maps that you have imported, as long as you don't clear that cache, it will still be there when you log back in the next time. Uh, one thing you're going to want to do is manage the grid a bit. So I'm going to come to manage this one here and you can see I've already set my columns and rows up to sort of match the grid that's provided on the map. So I'm going to zoom in here. You just use your mouse scroller if you want to zoom in and this white circle that you see on the map allows you to adjust the grid. I'll just zoom in a little bit more so you can see and you can move the grid from Owlbear Rodeo and try to match it with the grid on your map if you have a gridded map. And once you get it about right, it should be fine. All I'm gonna do here, I'm not gonna have my token snap to the grid. All I want is for the tokens to be about the same size as what I need on the map. So you can see here, I've got the grid about the same, about the same, and that's good enough for me. Uh, you can also allow others to control different things on the map. So if players want to make their own notes on the map, you can allow them to have access to notes. Uh, tokens, moving tokens around, players will be able to do that. There is no way to select which tokens players can move, so you're going to have to trust that your players will not be moving monster tokens and keep to their own. Uh, they can also add their own drawings, so if they want to set up, say, a wall spell somewhere on the map, they can draw that wall out and show you exactly where they want it to be placed. And then there's the fog of war. I always keep this turned off for players. I want to be in charge of the fog of war features. So again, using the scroll feature on your mouse, you can zoom in and out on your map. And I want to zoom in on the entrance here where my players tokens are going to go. So you can see, I literally just drag the token off from the side on the right here and I move it into place. So you just click and hold, drag over, drop it onto your map, and it looks like the tokens are about the right size. 
for the grid spaces there. Uh, before the players get to view this map, however, I want to set up some fog of war. So first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is toggle on this button right here, the enable fog cutting. And then you just select which type of fog tool you want to put on there. So you have a fog polygon, which allows you to move around and just select spots on the map. You can basically create a border around certain sections here. So as you move around, you basically cover up parts that you don't want your players to see. So if you look, I can click on this eye button right here and it'll show me what players cannot see. Uh, you also have the ability to select just shapes. You can do a full rectangle right there and turning that on, you can see again, players won't be able to see that, that area there. And then you've got the fog brush, which you can basically just select an area. It creates a little bit more of a rounded look. Uh, if you wanna just select a room, you can brush over that room and cover it up. This also is very helpful if you want to reveal a space. So I'm gonna take off the scissors here and I'm going to reveal this room to my players. And when I come back to the I button here, you can see that room is now revealed. There's also the ability to mark your token. So I'm gonna zoom in here. Woo, that was quick. Uh, use the little grabber tool to be able to move around the map and also move your tokens. If you just click on the tokens one time, you can place labels on them. So you can add different colored labels. You can also adjust the size of tokens. So some of the tokens come in a slightly larger size already. So you can see this little dragon token is slightly larger. But if you wanted to adjust it, maybe instead of a dragon, it's a kobold. You adjust the size and there it is there. Or if it's a larger creature, you just increase the size. If you are using spells that require an area of effect, you can draw out an area of effect based on the size. So you just show that there. And using the draw tool, it shows you which creatures are in that area of effect. If you're using something with a area of effect circle, you just expand from the area that is centered. So something like a fireball spell, you wanna select the, the, uh, the square where the fireball is cast, where that will end, and it expands out from there. Or if you are the origin of the spell, you cast it right around you and expand out from there. If you wanna differentiate between spell effects, you can always change the color of what's happening in there. So you can throw up green instead of red, uh, something like that. You can also just draw lines around with that little paintbrush tool. You can draw broader uh, areas like so. With that roller tool, you can just draw a broad line, draw a couple of them by clicking on and off with that line tool. You can make squares, rectangles, other things. So if you're doing like a thunderclap spell, something like that, you have circles and triangles as I've already shown you. And when you're done, if that spell effect is going away, you can just click that delete uh, eraser button there and clear off whatever you've put on. And if you wanna just, if you don't wanna overlap your spells, you can turn off this blending and as you'll see, it will be fully uh, colored in. So it's not gonna have that opacity. And if you wanna delete all of the markings you've made, you can just hit that trash can button, boom, all of them are gone. So next up is the measuring tool. Again, this is not something I use often, for my games because I never seem to get it just right. But this one actually seems to be working right now. So you can see the difference in distances, starting off at this point here, zero to five feet, zero to 10 feet, zero to 15 feet, which actually is lining up. So that's pretty cool. As players and DMs, you might want to indicate something on the map. You just click and hold this button and you can move it around. And then there's the note feature. You can add notes. And as a dungeon master, you can hide that from your players. So if you just wanna make a note about something and you don't want your players to see it, you can do that there. And you can even remove the background. You can have it with the background or without, and then you can lock it in place or not. And so if you wanna get rid of a note, it's just like a token. All you do is click, drag, to the trash. Very simple to do. And speaking of, same with tokens. Dragon defeated, 
goodbye done okay so you know the basics of how to get started as a dungeon master so now it's time to invite some players to jump into your game all you have to do is on the left hand side here hit that add party member button and it'll give you the game id and the URL that they can use. So you can copy and paste the URL if you're using some sort of Discord server, chat, text, whatever, however you keep in touch with your group. Just throw this over to them and they'll be able to copy and paste that URL or they can use this code when they log in to join Owlbear Rodeo uh, when they hit join game. So now I wanna get into one of the problems I've found while using Owlbear Rodeo. So I'm going to start a new game. I'm going to use this map from Hidden Shrine of Tomoe Chan. I've already set it up, so this edit button here, I've already gotten the columns and rows mostly lined up to the size I need them to be. And I'm going to select that map, just wait for it. Just keep waiting for it. Don't worry, it'll start soon. Oh, wait, glimmer of hope. Oh, there it is. Okay. So here I have the hidden shrine of Samoa Chan map. I'm going to zoom in, if it lets me, to one part of this map. Spoiler alert, this shows some of the creatures that we had from our last game. Notice how slow and glitchy it is. The size of this map is so large that it just burdens the website to the point where it becomes almost unusable. I found when I put Fog of War over the whole map, it, was, it would not function at all. So if you're using a big map like what I've got here in Hidden Shrine of Tomoe Chan, you may want to cut it down in some other program before importing the images here. So you may want to break it into sections if you can and import each section as its own map. So if you've got a multi-level map that is just massive, changing it so that it will fit as far as a smaller file size might help you out a little better. So that's Owlbear Rodeo for you. Free to use, a little bit of a lag if you're using larger maps, but all in all, a very simple product that is simple and intuitive and doesn't take a lot to get used to. If you're like me and you've bought into the D&D Beyond platform and they don't have a virtual tabletop for you, this is a good alternative to one of the others. I definitely enjoy using this with my after school group and we are going to continue to use this as our games go forward. Thank you guys very much. If you like what you're seeing here at Behold Gamers on YouTube, be sure to send people to beholdgamers.com. Kids ages nine to 14 can sign up for one of our online Dungeons and Dragons games in April the Adventure Guild. It's going to be a pirate themed adventure this time around. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be for new players and experienced players alike starting at level one and going on this long sweeping adventure at sea to find treasure to help a small town. I mean, what more is Dungeons and Dragons if not finding treasure and helping small towns, especially for first level characters. It is a completely original adventure that I have designed especially for this purpose, to run a D&D game for kids. So again, sign up your players at beholdgamers.com and be sure to check out our Twitch streams every Saturday with Tristan and I sitting down playing D&D together at twitch.tv slash beholdgamers. And please like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already ready, have fun, and learn lots. Punch his head. Okay. I punched out his head. <laughs> oh no! Two in a row! What? Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, another eight damage. Eight? Uh -huh. Six, I think it's 16 damage total. Yeah, 16 damage total. <laughs>